Resident Evil is a series I have always enjoyed playing through. I thought it would be interesting to look through the development of the games over the past 27 years, to not just see how Resident Evil has evolved, but how the company has too. Resident Evil is a series loved by many, and one that helped push Capcom into a recognised gaming company. Over the years the franchise has had its ups and downs, but one thing is for certain. Capcom has constantly been at the forefront of survival horror, and has helped evolve survival horror in the gaming industry. <laughs> in the early 1990s, Capcom wanted to create a horror game based on a game from 1989 titled Sweet Home. Initially, Capcom sent a proposal to the creator of Sweet Home, Takuru Fujiwara, to create a remake of his game. Fujiwara agreed to the remake, and put a then unknown developer in charge, Shinji Mikami, who was initially reluctant to accept the role. This was because Mikami was not a fan of being frightened, but it was this that Fujiwara believed made him the perfect director, as Mikami knew what was scary. However, not long into the initial development, the remake was put on hold, as Capcom lost the rights to the game, and so Mikami was instructed to come up with an entirely new IP. This game would become Biohazard, or Resident Evil. Production of the game began in 1993. Initially, Mikami chose to work alone. He created concept sketches, character designs, and even wrote 40 pages of a script. However, Mikami knew he couldn't do this alone, and it wouldn't be long until an ever-growing team was brought on board. The team decided to take a lot of ideas from Sweet Home, with some of these including the limited time inventory, the mansion setting, the puzzles, the loading door screens, and the survival horror elements. Initially, the team worked on creating a first-person perspective of the game, which would feature a supernatural Japanese horror style. But in the end, Mikami thought it would be better to go with a third-person American zombie horror inspired by George A. Romero films. Interestingly, it was Alone in the Dark that perhaps had the biggest influence on the direction of the game. Mikami discovered the game during the development, and it was this that inspired him to use the fixed camera angles and the third-person perspective. It could be argued that this changed the entire projection of Resident Evil, as the first person concept art that would be released later showed a Doom inspired game, instead of Alone in the Dark slower paced survival horror gameplay. Another interesting point is that the game originally was going to be a lot harder. Some examples include the reduced number of ink ribbons, disabling of the auto aim system, and the items could only be retrieved from the locations that the boxes were originally stored. This meant that players would have to go all the way back to the original box to retrieve their items. These were eventually taken out of the game. Mikami also toyed with the idea of having cooperative gameplay, but this was abandoned as the technology just wasn't there yet. After development had initially started with just Mikami, the team had now reached a staggering 80 people. Before the game's launch, there was an issue with the name in the US. Biohazard could not be trademarked in this country. As a result, the team had to come up with a different name for the game. They decided to go with Resident Evil, which Chris Kramer, the director of communications at Capcom, thought was cheesy. However, the rest of the team loved the name, convincing Mikami that the name Resident Evil would fit perfectly. Resident Evil is a third-person survival horror game in which the players control either Chris Redfield or Jill Valentine, both of whom are members of STARS. The game is presented with real-time 3D polygon characters and objects that are superimposed over a pre-rendered background, with a fixed camera angle. Players use tank controls to move their chosen character as they look to escape the mansion infested with zombies and other monsters. Throughout the game, players have to solve a number of puzzles that will help them progress throughout the game, or while having to find and use ink ribbons in order to save their progress. Resident Evil was released in March 1996 for the PlayStation. Initially, Mikami was concerned about the game's potential, as he didn't think horror would sell very well. 
the company projected that the maximum number of sales would be at around 200,000. How wrong they were. Resident Evil became a bestseller in Japan, North America and Europe, and shortly after its release it became the best selling game on PlayStation of all time. In Japan and America alone, the game sold 2 million by September 1996. By December 1997, 4 million units had been sold worldwide. This would continue to rise. It is estimated that current sales of the game are at around 5.08 million units. The game was also a critical success, becoming critically acclaimed with it receiving a Metacritic score of 91 out of 100. It was praised for its gameplay, combat, puzzles and horror. However, there were some criticisms towards the voice acting. In 1996, the game was rated as 14 in the top 100 games of all time by Games Master. In 2012, Time named Resident Evil as one of the 100 best games of all time. Not only was the game a commercial and critical success, it would be the beginning of Capcom's most successful gaming series, one that continues to be at the forefront of gaming horror today. It would help set the benchmark and launch Capcom into the forefront of survival horror. It would be two years later, in 1998, that Capcom would release their next title in the Resident Evil series, one that would build upon the success of the first game, in order to create one of the best survival horror games of all time, Resident Evil 2. Development of Resident Evil 2 began one month after the completion of Resident Evil, with Mikami only returning as a producer, as Hideki Kamiya was brought on to direct the project. This change in personnel came from the disagreements Mikami had with Kamiya creatively, with Mikami even trying to influence the team in order to push the game in a different direction. This was because Mikami did not want to create more Resident Evil games, and believed that Resident Evil 2 would help complete the series. However, Capcom wanted to turn the IP into a fictional universe. It was due to these disagreements that Mikami withdrew from the project Instead, as previously stated, only coming back as a producer. The team that would work on the project would be made up of around 45 people. The game itself was developed in stages, with the first version of the game being titled Resident Evil 1.5. The plot is almost identical to the final project, but in this version, the Umbrella Corporation was already closed down due to its illegal activities. In this version, the team introduces two new characters, the first is Leon S. Kennedy, a rookie cop who is almost identical to the finalised character, and Elsa Walker, a college student vacationing in Raccoon City. In this version of the game, the characters' paths do not cross, with the game instead following a similar model to that of Resident Evil, in which the two characters are instead helped by support characters. Leon S. Kennedy has a cop, Marvin Branner, and Linda, a researcher, who would eventually go on to become Ada Wong. Meanwhile, Elsa would be aided by Sherry Birkin and John, who would go on to become John Kendo, the gun shop owner. As the game neared completion, it was scrapped. Mikami stated at a later date that this was due to the game not reaching the standards the team desired. After no progress was made, Noburu Sugimura was tasked to fix the script and move away from Mikami's story, which left no room for a sequel. Eventually, Sugimura began rewriting the entire story. One change was the decision to replace Elsa with Claire Redfield, a change that would connect the first game to this one. But perhaps the biggest change came with the inclusion of the zapping system, in which the decisions the player made in the first run through of the game would affect how things played out in the second run through. Resident Evil 2 is set in Raccoon City, where the players take control of both Leon S. Kennedy and Claire Redfield who are looking to escape Raccoon City, after the citizens have been infected by a biological weapon known as the T-Virus, that has turned them into zombies. The game takes place two months after the mansion incident in Resident Evil 1996. In terms of gameplay, not much had changed. 
Once again the game uses pre-rendered backgrounds and fixed camera angles. Players once again use tank controls in order to move their character. Throughout the game players also have to solve a number of puzzles that will help them progress throughout the game. And once again the player will also have to use ink ribbons in order to save their progress. Resident Evil 2 was released on January the 21st 1998 and was a commercial success, with the game receiving over 100,000 pre-orders in Italy alone. A week after the game's release, Resident Evil 2 had sold 380,000 copies in North America. After a month and a half, this number increased to over 3 million copies worldwide, making it Capcom's most successful game up until that point. It is estimated that 11 million units of all versions of Resident Evil 2 have been sold worldwide. Resident Evil 2 was also a critical success, once again receiving critical acclaim. The majority of the reviews praised Resident Evil 2 for the atmosphere, setting, graphics, audio and overall gameplay, but there were some criticisms towards the controls and voice acting. Resident Evil 2 built upon the success of its predecessor and pushed Capcom to the forefront of survival horror, while also pushing the company to the forefront of the gaming world as a whole. It wouldn't take long for Capcom to release their next game in the series. It is a game that would introduce one of the most recognisable monsters in video game history, Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. Development began after the release of Resident Evil 2, in which Capcom began working on multiple Resident Evil projects. The next main instalment was to be directed by Hideki Kamiya, who was in charge of Resident Evil 2. The project was going to follow Hunk, who would attempt to bring back a sample of the G-Virus, and this would take place on a cruise ship. However, this was cancelled after the PS2 was announced. Capcom felt they could not get the game out to coincide with the launch of the PS2. Because of this, Sony began working on a side project, while Kamiya's team would work on Resident Evil 4. The spin-off would be directed by an inexperienced team led by director Kuzuhiro Tamaya. Originally, it was intended to introduce a new character, who would look to escape from Raccoon City. However, it was decided that Jill Valentine would become the main character, as this would promote the game much better. Resident Evil 3 was written by Yasuisa Karamura, who did not really have any experience with Resident Evil. He therefore played through the original game in order to familiarise himself with the universe and then began work on writing the script. Resident Evil 3 uses the same engine as its predecessor, which consists of a 3D pre-rendered background, but there are some improvements, with this being the interactive elements. This meant that players could shoot barrels, which would cause explosions. Perhaps the biggest change in Resident Evil 3 is with the setting, in which large parts of the game take place outside of buildings and in the streets of Raccoon City. This allowed the developers to create more varied environments. It also allowed the team to develop different zombie varieties, including police officers, doctors, citizens and military personnel. Capcom also introduced more action mechanics, which included the infamous dodge mechanic. The team also improved the AI in order to hunt the player up and down the stairs, something that couldn't be done in previous Resident Evil games. Mikami stated that he wanted the game to introduce a new type of fear that used the persistent feeling of paranoia. The Nemesis does exactly this, as players are constantly concerned at where and when he will turn up again. Originally, Capcom were going to title the game Resident Evil 1.5, as it takes place between the first two Resident Evil games. However, it was changed as Capcom wanted to keep the continuity going. Development began with a team of around 20 people, but over the development this increased to 50 staff members. Resident Evil 3 Nemesis saw the player take control of Jill Valentine as she looks to escape from the horrors of Raccoon City. Along the way, she meets a number of survivors, including Carlos Oliveira, who looks to aid Jill in her escape all while being pursued by a tyrant, codenamed Nemesis. Resident Evil 3 Nemesis was released on September the 22nd, 1999 in Japan, 
and November the 11th 1999 in North America. The game was a commercial hit, selling 1 million units worldwide by early October. In its first two weeks of its release, Resident Evil 3 was the top selling game in the US and in the UK. Upon its release, Resident Evil 3 received universal acclaim. GameSpot considered the game to be the most sophisticated and accomplished Resident Evil game in terms of graphics and gameplay. Resident Evil 3 was praised for its graphics, gameplay, puzzles, environment and the introduction of the Nemesis. The game was also praised for its replay value as the player had multiple choices to make throughout the game, but it was criticised for being too short. Despite these criticisms, Resident Evil 3 was another critically acclaimed game that once again pushed Capcom to the forefront of the video game industry. With the success of Resident Evil 2, Capcom began working on a multitude of Resident Evil projects. Code Veronica was originally an attempt to port Resident Evil 2 to the Sega Saturn. Shinji Mikami and his team were informed that this would not be possible, due to the large sacrifices that would have to be made. Instead they were tasked to work on a new project that could be ported over to the Sega consoles, and so the team got to work. Code Veronica's story and design moved away from what many had seen from the series at the time, with the game moving away from America and towards new environments set in the Antarctic and on a gothic inspired island. The gothic feel is seen and felt throughout the game, whether it be in the artwork or through the story itself. To add to this, the game tells a story through a lullaby, which was done intentionally in order to bring out the European operatic undertones. This contrasts with the panic horror scene in previous games that was inspired by American monster movies. Mikami split the team up, letting them work on what they were interested in. So if a worker was interested in environments, they were sent out to photograph houses and castles for research, which in turn they would then work on implementing into the game, whereas those who enjoyed weapons would work on designing the guns used throughout the game. Due to the upgrades in technology, Capcom were able to do more with the game design. For example, zombies were improved so that their jaws and eyes would move and twitch. The game's story follows Claire and Chris Redfield as they look to escape from a viral outbreak on a remote island in the Pacific and on a secret base in the Antarctic. Due to her previous experience, Claire's character was designed to be more tough and confident. This is seen in her ability to use dual weapons, which was the first in Resident Evil. Code Veronica was released in 2000 and was a commercial success, selling 2.54 million units. Interestingly, the game was expanded on as the original version of the game was made for the Dreamcast, which had a small user base compared to other platforms. To make up for this, Capcom expanded Code Veronica and this was released in 2001 titled Resident Evil Code Veronica X, which included new cutscenes and improved graphical alterations. Critically, the game received universal acclaim, with many critics believing it to be the best Resident Evil game at the time, and with some calling it the best horror game ever made. The game itself was praised for its atmosphere, graphics, use of real-time backgrounds, the dynamic camera, music, sound design and its story. Code Veronica won a number of game awards, including Best Adventure Game, Best Graphics, Game of the Year and Best Sound. Game Informer in 2001 ranked Resident Evil Code Veronica as the 69th in their Top 100 Games of All Time list. Resident Evil Code Veronica was another hit for Capcom, with them once again proving why they were at the forefront of the survival horror gaming industry. Each one of Capcom's games had received universal acclaim and Resident Evil Code Veronica added to this list.
Resident Evil Zero is a survival horror game developed and published by Capcom in 2002. It is a prequel to Resident Evil and covers the ordeals experienced in the Arclay Mountains by the Stars Unit Bravo team. The story follows Rebecca Chambers and convict Billy Cohen as they explore an abandoned training facility for employees of the pharmaceutical company Umbrella. The gameplay is similar to other Resident Evil games, but adds the ability to switch between characters in order to solve puzzles and use their unique abilities. Development of the game began in 1998. Resident Evil Zero was designed to be more difficult than previous games. The team were inspired by Sweet Home and decided to remove the item storage boxes seen in other Resident Evil games and replaced it with an item dropping feature. The game began development at the same time as many other games including Resident Evil 3 and Code Veronica. Capcom wanted to make zombie fights more intense. To do this they experimented with giving zombies different reactions when they were shot and would allow players to counter attack when being bitten. Capcom also tried to introduce faster moving zombies, which instead would be implemented in the Resident Evil remake in 2002. However, many of the ideas Capcom had were scrapped due to the size of the game. Resident Evil Zero was released on November 12, 2002 in North America and November 21, 2002 in Japan and March 7, 2003 in Europe. The game received generally positive reviews, with it being praised for its atmosphere, with many believing it to be wonderfully spooky and with an astonishing level of detail. The sound was also praised as well as the game design and the soundtrack, however there were some criticisms towards the controls, with many of the reviewers believing that the tank controls were outdated by that point. The game was also criticised for the changes made in the gameplay, such as the item dropping mechanic which some reviewers felt was tedious. As of December 2020, the game had sold 2.8 million copies, making it a commercial success. Resident Evil Outbreak is a survival horror video game. It was the first online game by Capcom. In the game, the player chooses a scenario, difficulty level and a character selection screen. The game's difficulty level is tied to what enemies and items the player can encounter while progressing through the scenario. The game has five scenarios altogether, each of which has an event checklist consisting of special actions which the player must perform in order to reach 100% completion. Upon doing so, the player will unlock infinite mode, in which the player's weapons never break and run out of ammo. Players were also able to play with each other. Once connected and logged in, they would choose free mode and scenario mode. Free mode places a player in a lobby and allows players to create their own games, while scenario mode would choose a scenario and character for the players automatically. The plot takes place in Raccoon City a couple of days after the outbreak. The game starts in Jay's bar, where eight characters work together to escape the bar and then make their way through the city in order to get to safety. The game takes place over a period of several days. The first idea of Outbreak was originally thought of before the release of Resident Evil 2 in 1998. Nurutaki Funamizu began working on a demo of a potential multiplayer game. The early design he came up with was a mini game in which players would try and survive for as long as possible, which sounds like other zombie multiplayer games we have had since. The team decided to move away from this only because they felt it did not encourage teamwork. Players would often run away from the horde in order to ensure their own survival, instead of helping each other out. The idea was put on hold, but in 2002 Capcom decided to continue developing the game. Resident Evil Outbreak was a part of an initiative from Capcom Studio One to develop three network games, with the other two being Auto Modista and Monster Hunter. The difficult part was coming up with a title. 
The first that would be used was Res Biohazard Online. However, after announcing the game in 2002, this was changed to Biohazard Network. In 2003, the game title was changed for the last time, with it being titled Biohazard Outbreak in Japan and Resident Evil Outbreak in all other countries. Initially, there were 18 different scenarios, but this was eventually reduced to 5. The game was released in 2003 in Japan. However, it was heavily delayed everywhere else. Resident Evil Outbreak was eventually released worldwide in September 2004. The game received mixed to positive reviews, with reviewers enjoying the controls, as well as the cooperative gameplay. However, the game was criticised for its real-time start menu, which left players open to attacks. It was also criticised for its short scenarios, its networkless gameplay, and Capcom's decision not to install voice chat into the game. Initially, Capcom wanted their multiplayer games to make 1 million each. Outbreak succeeded this number by selling 1.45 million copies, making it a success for the company. Resident Evil Outbreak File 2 is a survival horror game with online playability. It is a sequel to Resident Evil Outbreak and the final instalment in this multiplayer spin-off. After Outbreak's financial success, Capcom decided to make a sequel, featuring the same 8 characters in Raccoon City once again. It was developed in a year. The team built upon the initial success and tried to expand each of the scenarios once again. Just as with Outbreak, the game features 5 scenarios. The game features story branching, meaning that the player would get different endings based on how they played the game. Resident Evil Outbreak File 2 was released in September 2004 in Japan and April 26, 2005 in North America. Upon its release, it received mixed reviews. The game was also a commercial failure, selling 213,881 copies. This stopped plans for a third game in the series that Capcom had been planning. Capcom also faced financial difficulties due to the failure of the game. It was Capcom's first miss, one that they knew could not happen again. World that looks very similar to the president's daughter. Apparently, she's being withheld by some unidentified group of people. Who would have thought that my first job would have been a rescue mission? It's freezing. So cold all of us are it. Resident Evil 4 is a survival horror game by Capcom. Development on Resident Evil 4 began for the PlayStation 2 in 1999. There were four proposals. The first was directed by Hideki Kamiya, who had directed Resident Evil 2. However, Mikami felt as if the proposal was too far a departure from the last game. Interestingly, this game would end up becoming Devil May Cry. Resident Evil 4 was announced along with other Resident Evil games as one of the five games Capcom would be working on. The original version was labelled as the Fog version and was the first attempt at creating Resident Evil 4. The game was directed by Hiroshi Shibata and followed Leon S. Kennedy as he struggled to survive in a castle-like HQ for the Umbrella Corporation. The location would be set in Europe. The team developed first-person perspectives for the first time while creating this version of Resident Evil 4. Despite this progress, in 2003 a new version of the game was shown, which would become known as the Hooked Man version. In the game, players would take control of Leon but he was also now battling against paranormal enemies while exploring a haunted castle. The game would feature enemies such as suits of armour, living dolls and ghost men with a large hooked hand. The gameplay was very similar to what would become the finished version of Resident Evil 4 with the use of the over the shoulder camera angles. One mechanic that was removed was the use of dialogue choices. Resident Evil 4 would go through a number of changes throughout the next couple of years with each one not meeting the standard needed. Eventually, Shinji Mikami decided to step in himself and take over directorial duties of the game. 
deciding that he wanted to reinvent the series. Mikami has stated that his decision to do this was due to many of the previous Resident Evil games being more of the same. Other members of the Capcom team have spoken about how the staff were bored and tired of doing the same thing. However, not all staff members felt this way, and this caused division within the team. Many of these members became depressed, and it became difficult to motivate them. Staff also had reservations about Mikami's desire to change the camera angles, with some becoming worried about Mikami making big changes to the game he had created. This did not stop Mikami, who believed that this was the direction they had to head in. He got to work writing the script, which he was able to do in just three weeks. He decided to move away from the story of the Umbrella Corporation and move towards something else. Other big changes came with the move away from the traditional zombies, with the game including new monsters, the most famous being the Regenerator. Mikami's hope was to create a new type of fear. Players take control of a now special agent Leon S. Kennedy, on a mission to find the US President's daughter Ashley Graham, who had been kidnapped by a religious cult in rural Spain. Leon fights hordes of enemies infected by a mind-controlling parasite, and eventually reunites with Ada Wong. In a departure from the fixed camera angles and slower gameplay compared to previous Resident Evil games, Resident Evil 4 features a dynamic camera system and more action-oriented gameplay. Resident Evil 4 was released on January the 11th, 2005 and would receive critical acclaim. The game was praised for its gameplay, characters, story, voice acting, choreography, graphics, design and cinematic sequences. The game was also a commercial success. By December 2005, 3 million copies of the game had been sold on GameCube and the PlayStation 2. As of December 2022, sales had increased to 13.3 million units, making it the second best-selling Resident Evil game ever, and holds the record for the best-selling survival horror game in the 2012 Guinness World Records. Resident Evil 4's legacy is strong, with many people seeing it as one of the best games of all time. It would go on to inspire a number of future games including Dead Space, Gears of War, Batman Arkham Asylum and The Last of Us. The game would also redefine survival horror, helping move it into the modern era. Resident Evil 4 is seen as one of the most influential video games of the 2000s and it is clear to see why. After the failure of Resident Evil Outbreak File 2, Resident Evil 4 was a return to form that proved to the video game world that Capcom was still at the forefront of survival horror. Welcome to the Umbrella Chronicles, accessing file number 24981149RC. In 2006, Capcom announced that they would be working on a new Resident Evil title that would be made exclusively for the Nintendo Wii. The game would be developed by both Capcom and Caviar. This game would be titled Resident Evil The Umbrella Chronicles. When initially designing The Umbrella Chronicles, Capcom wanted the gameplay to be similar to Resident Evil 4, however this was scrapped, as they believed Wii users would prefer an easy experience instead. It was believed Resident Evil 4's gameplay would be too complicated and therefore Wii users wouldn't enjoy it. Due to it being a Wii game, The Umbrella Chronicles would be a rail shooter, meaning that players would follow a preset path, shooting enemies and picking up optional weapons and health items, all while occasionally choosing between multiple paths. Each stage is split into five individual chapters and contains save points at the end of each one. The story follows the exposure of Umbrella Corporation's meddling throughout the Resident Evil series, with Albert Wesker narrating throughout. It covers the events of Resident Evil Zero, Resident Evil 1 and Resident Evil Nemesis, as well as going into Umbrella's downfall. Resident Evil The Umbrella Chronicles was released on November 13th 2007, where it received positive reviews by critics. The game was praised for its gameplay, design, graphics and its addition to the Resident Evil series as a whole, helping the player learn more about the Umbrella Corporation. 
there were some criticisms directed towards the game's music and its lack of representation of Resident Evil 2 and 4. Despite this, it is fair to say that the game was a critical success. It also did well commercially, selling 1.4 million copies, making it a success for Capcom. Captain Deshant here. We secured the underground route to the coordinates. Resident Evil 5. Development for Resident Evil 5 began in 2007. Yasuhiro Ampo would direct the project, and Keji Inafune would produce it. Due to the success of Resident Evil 4, it was decided by the team that they would use many of the mechanics used in the game, including the use of a third person camera angle. The team wanted to try and merge the themes seen in Resident Evil 4 with those seen in the original game. Perhaps the biggest difference was the decision to introduce cooperative gameplay. Players could team up and play through the entire story together. At first there were concerns about doing this but this was soon changed after they realised they could actually use this to their advantage, including sections in which players would have to be saved by each other. They believed this would help increase tension. The game is a third person shooter and just as Resident Evil 4 does, it moves away from the singular story of previous entries and instead decides to feature a set number of chapters. As a result, the game does not feature a typewriter and ink ribbon in order to save progress. The plot focuses on Chris Redfield and Shiva Alamar, who are investigating a bioterrorist threat in West Africa. Resident Evil 5 was released on March 5th, 2009 and received generally favourable reviews from critics. The game was praised for its visuals, content, voice acting and its replay value. However, there were some criticisms, with much of it being directed towards the lack of horror. Instead, reviewers labelled it a full-on action blockbuster. This ended up dividing fans, with some being upset about this sudden shift, whereas there are others who see Resident Evil 5 as another great in the franchise. Sales of the game were strong, with it becoming the fastest selling game of the franchise in the UK. By June 2023, Resident Evil 5 had sold 8.8 .8 million copies of the original release. If you combine all the additions, including the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One versions, this number increases to 13.9 million copies. This meant that up until 2018, Resident Evil 5 was Capcom's best-selling game. It was this success that would see Capcom move away from horror and would help lay the foundations for the future entries of Resident Evil. The next title in the series would be a spin-off, titled Resident Evil The Dark Side Chronicles. Development of the game began when it was decided that on the rail shooters would help tell scenarios that Capcom had not included in Resident Evil The Umbrella Chronicles. Koato wanted to try and improve on the previous game in order to make this one more of a horror. The team decided to do this by inserting a camera system that made the player feel as if they were actually in the game, such as more realistic camera shaking. The team did this by spending a day in a city doing motion tests. The team also wanted to improve on the graphics in order to make them more believable. They believe this would help add to the horror. Once again the game is split into different stories, focusing on the events of Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil Code Veronica, both games that were missed from the previous instalment. Resident Evil The Dark Side Chronicles was a critical success, receiving fairly positive reviews. The game was praised for its graphics, music, playability and longevity. However, there were some criticisms towards the cameras, which some believed to be distracting. Some critics also criticised the story, which they believed would become confusing to anyone who had not played Resident Evil before. To add to this, commercially the game did not do so well, with the game only selling 145,000 copies. 
1.2 million less than the previous game. As a result, Resident Evil The Dark Side Chronicles was a commercial failure. This was not the first time a spin-off sequel underperformed for Capcom. It's time you learn the truth. We're taking this show over. Resident Evil Revelations would be directed by Koshi Nakanishi, who had worked as a game designer on Resident Evil 5. The game was designed for the Nintendo 3DS, mainly due to its 3D capabilities, meaning the team could produce an intense and scary experience. Just as with many of the newer Resident Evil games, Revelations uses chapters to split different parts of the game up. The goal for the team was to bring back the horror that had been seen in earlier Resident Evil games. The setting was chosen to try and replicate this, with a team involving a cruise ship that they believed would be perfect for this. This was mainly due to the claustrophobic corridors and the sense of isolationism and the inability to escape. Just as with old Resident Evils, the team uses sound, such as moans, to create fear and tension. Despite all of these positives, the team was struggling. This was mainly due to the budget constraints they were given. Despite this, the game would finally be released on January the 26th, 2012. The game is set shortly after the events of Resident Evil 4. The plot follows Jill Valentine and Chris Redfield as they try to uncover the truth behind a bioterrorist organization that plans to infect the Earth's oceans with a virus. Upon its release, the game received generally favourable reviews, with critics praising the game for its return to horror, the sound and the setting. However, there were some criticism of the scenarios in which the player would not be on the cruise ship. Many believed that the team were on track to create a classic, but were held back due to not fully understanding what the strengths of the game were. Revelations was also a commercial success, with the game becoming the 25th best-selling video game of February 2012 in North America, with 122,000 units sold. Sales would go on to be 296,000, which Capcom felt was slightly disappointing. However, once the game was released on other consoles a year later, the sales would be a lot stronger, with Revelations selling 2.4 million copies. If he keeps bleeding, he's going to attract the entire neighborhood. Quiet! I hear him. <laughs> Development of Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City began during the development of another Capcom IP Lost Planet 2. Capcom would not take the lead here however, with Slant 6 games being brought on board to develop the game. Operation Raccoon City was kept as a secret for a while, with Slant 6 games only willing to say that they were working on an exciting new project. The game is set around the same time as Resident Evil 2 and 3 and follows a group of private military contractors for the Umbrella Corporation during the zombie outbreak in Raccoon City. Although set during the events of Resident Evil 2 and 3, the game is not considered canon, making it a standalone game. The game features two campaigns, one that follows the Umbrella Security Service team and one that follows the United States Special Ops team. Players can choose to play any of the characters on either team. The game features a number of monsters including zombies, lickers, hunters and the Cerberus. The game was released in March 2012 for the PS3, Xbox 360 and Microsoft Windows where it received mixed reviews. The game received praise for its gunplay and teamwork, but there were criticisms directed towards the design of the game, glitches that were present, the poor AI and the gameplay, which many considered to be bland. Commercially, the game did well, selling 2.1 million copies as of June 2012, 
with Capcom themselves stating that the game was considered a big success for the company. Bioorganic weapons are a global threat. Start working with the rest of the world. Iraqi Iraq and Syria. We have to come to my desire to reveal the I'm going to tell them everything. It might create more problems than it's time to take responsibility. We want to have any chance. I've always valued your friendship, Leon. Stare at where you are. Mr. President! Development of Resident Evil 6 began soon after the release of Resident Evil 5, however it would only enter full development in 2009. Elichiro Sasaki was set to direct the game, after previously working on Resident Evil Outbreak. As soon as development began, many with Capcom were excited at the direction they were taking the game in. Harry Bayashi, who was producing the game, said he wanted the game to be the ultimate horror entertainment. It is clear to see that many within Capcom knew how important this game was. However, although there was plenty of talk around creating the ultimate horror experience, Capcom decided early on that the market for survival horror games was too small, and so the team was directed to move away from that and towards an action game instead. Development of the game was led by Hiroyuki Kobayashi, who wanted to try and deliver the most impressive Resident Evil game to date. Capcom's hope that it would evolve the series just as titles such as Resident Evil 4 had done. More than 600 staff were brought on board, making it the largest production for Capcom up until this point. Kobayashi decided to reintroduce zombies back into the main series, after they had been left out of Resident Evil 4 and 5. This decision was made due to many of the fans requesting the return of them. It has been admitted that the game's direction changed a number of times during its development. This was due to the number of new concepts that had been brought into the series. Resident Evil 6 was released on the 2nd of October 2012. Players control Leon S. Kennedy, Chris Redfield, Jake Muller and Ada Wong as they confront the force behind a worldwide bioterrorist attack. The story is centred around their four interwoven campaigns and every campaign features a unique style in both tone and gameplay. The game was met with mixed or average reviews. Resident Evil 6 was praised for its graphics, design, AI and controls, however it was criticised for its campaign structure, dialogue and its lack of identity when compared to previous Resident Evil games. Fans also criticised the game. Kobayashi responded to this by saying that the fans are right to voice their opinion and it does matter, but that Capcom would not be beholden to them. Sales started strong, with Capcom shipping 4.5 million copies worldwide. However, due to the mixed reception, sales of the game began to dwindle, meaning that it did not reach Capcom's projections. In February 2013, Capcom admitted that the sales had been sore and blamed it on the challenges the team had faced during its development. However, over the years, sales have continued to rise. As of 2022, it has sold 10.9 million units. Despite the commercial and critical failures, Resident Evil 6 did receive a number of awards, including Best Sound Editing at the Golden Reel Awards. It was also nominated for Best Original Score at the Hollywood Music and Media Awards. Resident Evil 6 marks an important point in Capcom's history, as it was the first game in the main series that failed to receive a positive reception from critics. Due to these failures, Capcom's strategy would change, with them looking to return to their survival horror roots.
development of Resident Evil Revelations 2 began after the release of Revelations, when Capcom announced that the team responsible for Revelations would begin working on a sequel. However, Resident Evil Revelations 2 would not follow on from the first game, and instead would be part of a series that would help fill the gaps in the Resident Evil lore. It was stated that Resident Evil would remain an action oriented series, whereas the Revelation series would be a fan driven game, which would bring back the old survival horror. The idea was to keep long term fans on board while creating action games for the newer fans. The team wanted to help give fans an experience that would take them back to the horror experiences they fell in love with. Resident Evil Revelations 2 was released on February the 25th 2015 in a weekly episodic format. The plot is set between the events of Resident Evil 5 and 6. The game received mixed to positive reviews. It was praised for its setting, story, characters and gameplay but there were criticisms directed towards the graphics and technical issues. The issue with the episodic format is that some episodes received high praise, whereas others were considered average. Sales of the game started strong, with it quickly selling over 1 million copies. As of March 2020, the game had reached 2.6 million units, meaning it surpassed its predecessor. Revelations 2, despite being a spin-off, proved that fans wanted a return to survival horror seen in previous games and would help shape the future of the company. With Capcom deciding to move away from the action games they originally wanted to start doing and back towards their roots. Hit boy's got to eat. He got to have his supper. Come here, boy. Let's do this. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, he's not eating it, Jack! He's not eating it! Shut the hell up, Marguerite! Get the hell out of here! You're a son of a bitch! Oh, I can't believe it, you son of a bitch! He's not eating it, he's not eating it! This was supposed to be a very special feast. Come on, boy. Welcome to the family, son. After the release of Resident Evil 6, Capcom began to conduct internal discussions in order to understand what direction would be best for the future of the series. Originally, after its release, Capcom wanted to begin working on another action game, similar to Resident Evil 6. However, that view began to change, as the team took inspiration from the Evil Dead series. Instead, it was decided that the game would take place in a single location and would use a first person perspective in order to make the game more immersive. The game would also be made in a custom engine known as the RE Engine. Development for this new concept began in February 2014. The game was directed by Koshi Nakanashi, who had previously been in charge of development of Resident Evil Revelations. The team would be made up of 120 members. Interestingly, according to Jan Takeyushi, higher ups at Capcom wanted the game to be a multiplayer game and began putting pressure on the team to do this. However, once Takeyushi joined the team, he scrapped these ideas. Instead, the game would look to return to its roots, focusing on survival horror and exploration. Resident Evil Biohazard was released on January the 24th, 2017. The players take control of Ethan Winters as he searches for his missing wife, all while being pursued by an infected family in a derelict plantation. Throughout the game, the player will have to solve a number of puzzles while attempting to fight off a number of different enemies. The game was a critical success, receiving generally favourable reviews. The game was praised for its story, horror, its unsettling intense atmosphere, its return to horror, sound design and gameplay. However, there were some criticisms, with much of it being directed towards the ending and final boss battle. Resident Evil Biohazard was also a commercial success, with the game shipping over 2.5 million copies during its initial release. Upon its release, it was a bestseller in the UK, Japan and the US, with the latter selling more copies of Resident Evil in January than any other game. 
By June 2023, the total number of sales had reached 12.4 million copies. The game also won a number of awards, with some of these including being voted first in the best horror game of all time by Games Radar, as well as awards for its sound mixing, audio and VR. Resident Evil Biohazard was a huge moment for Capcom, proving to the company that survival horror does sell, and it sold better than Resident Evil 6. The success of this game would help move Capcom back to their roots, and back to the forefront of the survival horror industry. Is anyone here? Jesus. They're everywhere. I'm giving you an order, rookie. You save yourself first. Help me, please! What in God's name? Development for a Resident Evil 2 remake began after the release of the Resident Evil 1 remake in 2002. However, at the time, Shinji Mikami did not want to divert development away from Resident Evil 4. The remake was put on hold for a number of years, until in 2015, Yoshiaki Hirabayashi announced that the game had been approved and a remake was in development. It wouldn't be until 2018 that more news of the game would be released when Sony showed a teaser trailer for the game. Hirabayashi wanted to capture the spirit of the original and built upon the feedback given from Resident Evil 6 in order to make the best possible game for fans. Just as Capcom had done with Resident Evil Biohazard, the team prioritised horror over action. The team wanted to give the player a feeling of claustrophobia. That had been captured so well in the old Resident Evil games. Producer of the game, Tsuyoshi Kanda, has spoken about the difficulty of making the zombies seem scary, as gamers were now used to them due to zombies being incorporated into a number of games. The team did this by taking advantage of the room layout, lighting and design. Resident Evil 2 was released on January the 25th, 2019. Just as with the original, players controlled the rookie police officer Leon S. Kennedy and the college student Claire Redfield, as they attempt to escape from Raccoon City during a zombie outbreak. Upon its release, Resident Evil 2 received universal acclaim. Praise was given to almost every aspect of the game, with reviewers seeing it as a perfectly crafted survival horror game. Resident Evil 2 was also a commercial success, selling 3 million copies in its first week, becoming Capcom's second biggest launch in its history. Resident Evil 2 became a bestseller in Japan, the UK and the US. As of June 2023, the game has sold 12.6 million units. Resident Evil 2 won a number of awards, with some of these including Ultimate Game of the Year, Best Audio and Best Original Score. Resident Evil 2's release proved to Capcom once again that survival horror does sell, and that there was a huge market towards remaking their old games. It was a return to form, proving that Capcom are capable of creating a masterpiece in survival horror, just as they were able to do in the 90s. I'm with the Umbrella Biohazard Countermeasure Service, UBCS for short. This city is completely cut off, isolated. We need help. My men cannot do this alone. The town's crawling with those freaks. No chance of fighting our way out of the city. Why is she here? She's unreliable. It's me he's after. I'll buy you some time. Hey, wait! Wait, Jill! Development for Resident Evil 3 began during the development of Resident Evil 2's remake. 
Capcom decided it was their goal to complete a remake of the original trilogy, which had always been considered the golden age of Resident Evil games. Capcom began working on the game while still working on Resident Evil 2's remake, and as a result, K2 Incorporated, a subsidiary of Capcom, were brought in to help. Interestingly, some people who had worked on the original version of Resident Evil 3 were involved in the project, and were given the opportunity to rebuild their vision of what Raccoon City should look like. The development teams for both games decided that they wanted to tie both stories together, more so than the original games did. The team also wanted to improve the pace of the game, while hoping to develop the characters more, especially the relationship between Jill and Carlos. A huge amount of time was also spent on designing Nemesis. The art team ended up designing several iterations of him, before finally settling on the right one. While designing Nemesis, the art team wanted to make sure that they stayed true to the original concept. The team also wanted to improve Nemesis's AI, by allowing him to use weapons, pick up Jill and jump long distances in order to catch up with her. While developing the story, the team made up a number of changes, way more than what would be seen in Resident Evil 2's remake. Examples of cut content include the clock tower, the graveyard, the park and city hall. To add to this, the team decided to give Carlos a more prominent role than seen in the original version of the game. Resident Evil 3 was released on April the 3rd, 2020. Just as with the original, players control former Stars agent Jill Valentine and mercenary Carlos Oliveira as they attempt to find a vaccine and escape from the city during a viral outbreak. The game is from a third person perspective and requires the player to solve puzzles and defeat monsters while being pursued by the nemesis. Resident Evil 3 received generally positive reviews. The game was praised for its gameplay, visuals, atmosphere and the storytelling. Despite this high praise, there were some criticisms towards its lack of depth, lack of exploration when compared to Resident Evil 2's remake and the amount of content removed from the original version. Despite these shortcomings, Resident Evil 2 was a commercial success, selling 2 million units in its first 5 days. By June 2023, the game had sold 7.6 million copies. Despite sales being a lot lower than Resident Evil 2's, Capcom still considered it to be a success, with sales falling in line with their expectations. Resident Evil 3 did not live up to the same standards as Resident Evil 2's remake, however it still showed Capcom were capable of developing a strong survival horror game. It also proved to them that straying too far away from the original games do not go down well with the fans. No, no! Friendly! Friendly! Who are you? Who sent you? What's going on? They're coming. Who is? Development for Resident Evil Village began in 2016, before its predecessor Resident Evil was even released. Due to the team being unsure as to whether the return to survival horror would be successful or not, they were not sure which direction the sequel would take. During its early development, the team came up with the concept of the village as the central theme, 
Resident Evil 4 was a huge inspiration for them as they looked to return to the European setting. The idea was to use Resident Evil 4's approach to combat, exploration and puzzle solving, while using the functions seen in Resident Evil 7. Despite Resident Evil Biohazard's return to survival horror, the team decided to move away from it in Resident Evil Village, and move towards a more balanced game, in which there would be action and horror. While developing the game it was decided that like Resident Evil 4, the village would incorporate a variety of different types of horror, with Capcom describing it as a theme park of horror. In the hope of making the game more open world, the team included optional areas, as well as secrets that would reward the player for exploring. Interestingly, the team decided to move away from the claustrophobic horror scene in Resident Evil 7 that had also worked in some of Capcom's most successful games and move towards a more open experience. According to them, the idea was to be afraid of the openness of the village. Just as the other Resident Evil games had been, Village was made in the RE engine. Instead of the game having zombies, there are instead a number of monsters, including werewolves, vampires and a ghost-like mutant. Resident Evil Village was released on May the 21st, 2021. Players control Ethan Winters, who searches for his kidnapped daughter in a village filled with mutant creatures. Resident Evil Village received generally favourable reviews, with the game being praised for its gameplay, the first half of the game's horror, the more open world and the graphics. However, there were some criticisms. These were the boss fights, the puzzles, the second half of the game and the game's narrative. There also seems to be division on the move to action. Some praised it, seeing Village as an evolved horror game, whereas others saw it as taking the worst parts of Resident Evil 6 and merging it with some aspects of horror. The game was a commercial success, with 3 million copies being sold in its first 4 days since release. By June 2023, the number of units sold reached 8.3 million. The game also won a number of awards, including Ultimate Game of the Year, PlayStation Game of the Year and Best Audio. Resident Evil Village was another success for the company, but perhaps was also a warning to what might happen if the company once again strayed too far away from their horror roots. Vacation, eh? You will receive our most sacred body. It begins now. Development for Resident Evil 4's remake began in 2018. Originally, the development was led by Studio M2, but this changed in 2021, when Division 1 were given the lead, meaning many of the staff members were those who had worked on the remake of Resident Evil 2. Remaking Resident Evil 4 was seen as more of a challenge, as the game was still widely popular and more accessible than previous remakes. The development for Resident Evil 4 was split into three groups. One would focus on the village, one would focus on the castles, and the other would be focused on the island. The team wanted to make sure the game remained more horror focused than action. The team decided they wanted to modernise the gameplay. They did this by improving the shooting mechanics, adding new weapons and reworking the enemies such as the Ganados in order to make them more dangerous. The hope was that this would force the player to use the environment around them to survive. This includes igniting flammable objects or barricading doors. The plot follows that of the original game, with Capcom adding additional story elements to make the game feel new and fresh. As stated before, Resident Evil 4 sees the game return to horror, with Capcom deciding to update the graphics in order to create a more terrifying environment. 
Resident Evil 4 was released on March the 24th, 2023, and was a critical success, with the game receiving critical acclaim. Resident Evil 4 was praised for its visuals, updated gameplay, its blend of action and horror, the controls, the story, and the improved characterization of Leon and Ashley. It seems the fans agreed with this acclaim, as Resident Evil 4 was also a commercial success. Within the first two days of its release, the game had sold over 3 million units, making it one of the fastest selling Resident Evil games of all time. By July 2023, sales had reached over 5 million units. With the game still fresh, I am sure this number will continue to rise in the coming year. It is also too soon to know whether or not Resident Evil 4's remake will receive any awards, but based on the praise it has received from critics and the commercial success too, I am sure Capcom will once again win a number of awards. Thank you so much for watching the video today. I am intrigued to know which Resident Evil game is your favourite. Please let me know in the comments section below. I appreciate all of the support. I am hoping to release a number of videos over the next few weeks. Please let me know what you would like to see next. Thank you for watching.